LWRC. All hits. Each of these steel plates, 115 yards. Brown Ales magazine coming in. I shot until well past dark, no one else around, complete solitude, a full moon rising in the distance, snow-capped peaks, complete and utter silence. Epic. And then I shatter that silence with the sound of the LWRC M6A2 rocking the steel targets at 150 yards. Man, that was fun. Hello everybody, this is Nut and Fancy. Finally, the tabletop review on the outstanding LWRC M6 series of piston-driven AR-15s. They have been, actually I should say, this rifle has been in the project for, I think, well over a year and a half. Testing off and on, getting all my data, getting ready for it. I had to feel it, and I'm feeling it tonight. I shot until about, uh, not too late, probably about 9 o'clock tonight. Booked it on back, and I'm tired, and I'm probably going to flub the words, but I want to do the review now. And I'm in the spirit of the LWRC, most importantly. Wicked. I, I was actually going to do the tabletop review last night. I sat That's down, LWRC had the gun ready, M6 and then it dawned on me I hadn't ran steel cased ammo An through it. And, and I was like, by oh, eight. I could talk about it, but I'd much rather go do it. And so I did just that. I sent about 100 rounds downrange of steel cased out of the LWRC, in addition to the probably, I don't know, ballpark in four to 500 rounds brass, maybe even more, I don't keep track really, over the span of time. And I'm happy to report this gun freaking rocks. I mean, it's the only piston AR-15, and I'll get to that when we get to reliability, durability. The only piston AR-15 I've ever seen that runs Wolf. Steel case to Llama, whatever that other brand is, it will run it. It's a piston AR. Wow, that is really incredible. Anyways, that was a reason for tonight's outing to take this gun. I had some other projects I'm working on. You'll see as time progresses. There's so much to talk about. This video is going to usually be about 45 minutes long as I cover in detail the data that I revealed of the guns. Um, and I'm going to say guns because I think this gun is very representative of the entire LWRC piston driven AR line um, and also I'm going to reveal the not reveal but I'll talk about the details as I know it I may make some mistakes may miss some stuff I do my best you guys know how it goes thank you so much for watching the video if it's too long for you watch it in parts come back later you know you know just put it up on your iPhone whatever your smartphone spool it and then play it when you have time here we go right on into philosophy of use Here's one you haven't really heard before because I think this is really the first time I've reviewed a gun on the TMP table that has the track record that this M6 does. And I'm going to say first and foremost, it is a RTR, military grade carbine, ready to run. That's what I mean by RTR. In the remote control racing world, they call it RTR if you your car is ready to go. This gun is ready to go and more importantly, it is ready for hard combat use. It's a military quality AR-15. And it is combat proven. It's law enforcement proven. And it's meant for hard use. That's my first philosophy of use. For you guys that really want to dial into something with a very solid track record, here you go. This is an awesome option. And there's so many great guns out there. I don't like playing favorites. Um, I. I don't have any problem at all ranking something very high on the likability scale and doing it over and over again if they meet my personal standards 
of excellence, and I think the LWRC does that. Is that five? It is an, an excellent carving for that. Uh, I want to also say, so. of course, so and they sell it already as one. such, it's an LE carving. So if you're an officer, you have an individual officer's purchase program going on, you have the funds to buy a rather expensive gun. It's not cheap. Great option for you. Civilian Same. sheepdogs, the backbone of rule of law, if you ask me. Great option for you guys too. Defending the farm, family, without rule of law gun, absolutely. And then going back to my point, some guys, they like the new stuff coming out, kind of like the Rock River PDS carving, but it's unproven and it takes time to get that track record, which we'll mention again here before the video ends. It just takes time. And so they want to dial into something that's proven. It's been out there for a while and that can rock and roll with the best of them. Um, watch my, by the way, my Piston versus DI Dilemma video. If you are on a flash media capable phone, you'll see the annotation up on the upper right in computer environment, you definitely will. And in that, I talk about my, still the same philosophies on direct gas impingement versus piston AR-15s. I do not think a DI gun is broken. I run all the time. I run thousands of rounds through them. They're very accurate. Yeah, they're a little bit dirty back here, maybe a lot dirty back there, but they still work. In that philosophy video though, I do mention that my preference, um, if I go an SBR or if I go suppressed, I want a piston gun. Because then I don't have to dick around with tuning. I don't have to change out my buffers. I don't have particulate blowback coming into my face as it's charging down that gas tube right to my chipmunk cheeks, getting in my eyes and stuff. I think a piston gun is superior for that. Definitely. SBR, because we don't have to, we're not changing anything about how the gun cycles. We're not changing where the gas tap off point is, blowing it back into the bulk carrier group. And then also for suppressed. Um, moreover, some guys just still, for whatever reason, prefer the piston AR. They think it's more reliable. And I'm not going to say it isn't. Uh, I think the piston guns coming out now and being made now are. What I'm seeing from my own testing, I mean, forget all other stuff. I'm just saying my own testing here in TNP, they're extremely accurate. I just got done this summer with a Christensen Arms CA-15. That was a very accurate AR-15 piston. Uh, I think it runs an Adams Arm kit on it, whatever. They're great guns, and they're very reliable. You can dunk them in water, shoot them, stuff like that. H&K 416, which is actually in a lot of ways a direct competitor to this gun, the 416. Okay, and then also just as collectible, check this out. This version right here is no longer made. This is actually called, let me make sure I get this right, the MRE, not as in Beans and Franks, <laughs> MRE, but they called it the Multi-Regional Earth Anodizing Process. And like we learned when we went up and visited Tactical Solutions in Idaho, I, anodizing just cannot you can't do the same batch for all the parts. And so they had variances between the receiver and the hand guards, and even this model shows it, look. So it's supposed to be kind of a desert brown, and I actually love it. I don't have any problems. With, this is more of an olive color. This is more of a brown color. Some customers were complaining about that, and so LWRC, responding to those requests, said, that's fine, we won't do those anymore. And now they're offering a Cerakoted upgrade for 150 bucks. You can go OD or FDE on that. This is a collectible gun right here. Very collectible. Maybe even more so since it was a TMP test, but I don't know. That's POU. There's probably some other stuff, home defense, all that other stuff I've talked about a lot. Let's rock. Innovation and design. LWRC, I'm not an expert on what their company is, what went on with them. I know they had kind of a whole change of management uh, several years ago. And there was some turmoil in the company. And this happened and that happened. What basically resulted from that, as far as you need to know, are better guns and tighter quality control. But these guns are different. Uh, they have high quality control. More, huh? oh, yeah. They Way revised the piston yeah. return the spring for more reliability. They have cold, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, cold hammer forged barrels. Stake uh, keys, actually this one has a stake key and then later and current versions have a one piece bolt carrier. I'll show you that or at least reference it when I get inside the gun. We got to talk about the piston system. Um, normally in a DI gun, we're going to tap it off right about here at the gas block, and it's going to have a tube running back here that will impulse the bolt carrier group through the gas key, right? This is a piston system, and it's actually pretty innovative. And I'm going to jump into 
They're excellent manual, by the way. Okay, it is awesome because they show it in such clear detail. You can see all the components of what they designed. It's actually a segmented operating rod right there. You have an intermediate rod, op rod, spring like this. And my understanding is they did this because they wanted to eliminate torque. They didn't want this to ever bend under hard use. You know, we've seen some single piece rods like the Ruger SR556. I think the PDS runs those by Rock River. I don't know of any of those bending, but in their research and development, their R&D, they said, hey, we're going to go with this. We think it's better that way. And also they have a a beneficial thing and that is it's kind of self-regulating to a large degree and then you can have uh, these are that's a ribbed nozzle right there and it's self scraping on the piston cup the M6A2 does not have an adjustable gas system I think the M6A3 does you can see here there's no knob or dial that's easily accessible outside the handguard no big deal. Every round I sent down range with this gun cycled. Not one jam. I'll repeat that. Not one jam. That's pretty amazing. Let's start at this end. We'll go from tip to stern like I usually do. A2 series flash suppressor closed in the bottom. Just standard threading there. No, uh, I haven't swapped that out yet. I might one day put a Phantom on it. That's my favorite. I kind of like this one too. A2s are fine with me. Uh, there's some pretty trick compensators out now that will actually flash suppress and reduce recoil and muzzle rise. Might look into those too. But honestly, I don't find that to be super necessary. And what I'm doing, if where split seconds count, like in three gun competition, you really need to rock and roll, I think it's probably a good idea. Then on to the barrel. Man, I got lots of good things to say about this barrel. One, I like the profile. I measured it, it's .073 inches. It's a mid-weight profile and it's that way under the handguard as well. Ideal. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of the M4 profiled barrel. Does it make a huge difference in semi-automatic fire? Nope, doesn't. Still accurate, it just bugs me. I'm never gonna attach an M203, why do I need a skinny little barrel under the handguard? It just bugs me, it's a, I know, it's just my own weirdness. But I, I want a more stable barrel, and I want no, one knowing that I can really do mag dump after mag dump and still retain some consistency of impact. That's what I like. Uh, we already talked about the cold hammer forged process. It's basically an oversized barrel blank that's hammered by high pressure rotary hammers, making a denser, stronger steel, which by the way is, make sure I get this right, 41V45 chrome moly vanadium steel. It's 5.56 mm NATO chambered one and seven twist. Mostly a good thing, right? Uh, I would say mostly. I will, the plot thickens a little bit when we get to accuracy. I'm going to show you what my results were. You might find it interesting. Uh, love the barrel. It's extremely high quality, and actually, it has perhaps better consistency than some other barrels. I'm talking like chrome line barrels and that's because of what they do to it. It's actually called a Nikor finishing that LWRC puts on their guns and it, the metal is like dipped in a salt nitride chemical bath and its surface hardens down to five thousandths of an inch impervious to salt and corrosion. Nikor is a pretty cool treatment. This is not a gun you probably want to Duracoat or Cerakote. As a user, I'm saying. I don't think it ruined the Nikkor, but it's pretty. It's a pretty cool upper end finish. And it's also done inside out. So the interior of the bore also wears Nikkor, and it's more consistent than chrome plating. Chrome plating at times has been known to flake off, maybe have a pit or a mo nodule in there that will affect accuracy. Not so with Nikkor. So outstanding job. They actually do, this whole gun is actually very corrosion proofed from the barrel to the innards everything is corrosion proof it's almost like a navy seal gun designed to go swimming in salt then we get to the handguard i may come back to the barrel forgot some stuff downside on ergonomics is that's kind of a wide handguard by my standards uh, i started kind of harping on it and my shot showed 2010 visits of how i really like the narrower handguard it's more ergonomic it's just easier to grasp this one has kind of a fat handguard uh, there's fatter out there. I'm not saying there aren't, but I compared this against some others, some Troy rails, those thin and very uh, compact LaRue and Daniel Defense rails, and this is just a little bit wide. Do you need it for cooling purposes? I, I don't think so. 
that being said, it's not horrible and you do have a lot of rail space, although I think the newer rails are going along the lines of the Troy Industries Alpha Rail or the TRX Rail where they're going to be smooth, the user's going to fix rail sections to where they want it. I know PRI was doing something like that as well. Um, nice rail system, uh, kind of older school rail system I will say. Flush mount swivels, two positions where you can attach those both on the left and right hand side. Ultra, ultra cool. And then that's the attachment system on the top rail. We'll talk about that in field strip and show you just in the diagrams of the manual of how you're going to pull that off. Access to piston, op rod, piston return spring, do the service and cleaning on that. Not a big deal, pretty easy to do. Onto the receiver. 7075 forged aluminum. It's not billet. Uh, I don't really care. I think 7075 aluminum forged variety is extremely tough for everything I intend to do it with it and I really don't understand why people feel like they need to have a billet receiver over that. I'm pretty stoked about it. Uh, so sup superb quality. This is not unusual though. We see this in a lot of AR makers, okay? For realsies. And then to the trigger. This is not the stock LWRC trigger. LWRC, the regular trigger actually is pretty decent. Um, they do what's called a nickel Teflon coating on their upgrade trigger and I forget what they call it. And it actually Definitely pulls a lot lighter, about five to five and a half pounds. The one out of the box that came with this gun was pulling around six, crisp let off. It was actually pretty decent. But when I was running Sledgehammer, which by the way, this gun rocked on, uh, I wanted to see if I could do a little bit better at that 200 yard stage with heart rate up with a better trigger. This is a Timney modular four pound trigger and it is better than the stock LWRC. I'm th throwing that in. There's a Magpul extended um, trigger guard there. Love those, by the way. I would recommend you probably try your trigger out first. You probably probably I'm like it. You know, I'm kind of a trigger LWRC snob um, so because far. of the long range stuff I do, and also for hammer. speed. I like it for speed. I can shoot faster with a better trigger. Comes with a, a Myad grip, and then the stock that comes with it is actually the Veltor. I hear people call that all kinds of things. This is a CTR, obviously and I put that on. I love the CTR. I'm a big fan of it. I'm not a fan of the Veltor stock at all. I may mention this again in accessories. It's just, uh, it grabs my beard, rips hairs out of it. Uh, don't dig it. It's obnoxious to me and it looks goofy to me. Some guys like it. I hear from talking to the guys at LWRC that they're going to swap that out for something different. I don't know if it's a CTR or what. Uh, I think that's a mil spec tube on there, if I'm not mistaken, and the previous owner put that on it. Uh, I don't even know what brand that is. Something cool, no doubt. It's just an ambi tie-in for a single point if you want it. Sights are included with your LWRC M6 series rifle. These were made by Troy for LWRC. They ride extremely low. I love them. Standard Troy, they rock. And this is a standard height receiver. It's not a higher one, which I actually thought it was, but it's not higher like a PAW for some of the other ones out there. It's a standard height. So any AR-15 M4 series of BUIS will fit on it. And then LWRC has their very rockin' skirmish sights on some other models of the M6. The skirmish sights are basically a proprietary design. They're ultra flat. I think they're like 0.4 inches when they fold. These are very um, you know, low too. But they have some upgrades like Nikor finishing. They're completely impervious to corrosion. Half MOA click, clicks, serrated and milled lines that re, uh, reduce glare in the backside. And then they're kind of designed for gross motor skills when you're stressed or very tired. You don't have to push a button to actuate them. Not these sites, I'm talking their skirmish sites. You just raise them up and click them and then you have to push something to pull, pull, pull them down or to fold them again. I haven't seen them, haven't shot them. I th they, they're the same price as other sites. I would definitely look into those. They sound pretty rocking. I am happy with these Troy sites on this one as well though. One thing I forgot to mention on the piston is the recoil impulse. And to me this is a big thing when I'm talking about DI versus piston guns. I actually like a DI impulse better. A lot of the DI guns I've shot, and to include this one to be honest, I actually have a much more defined recoil that you can feel this section up here recoiling in addition to the recoil of the cartridge itself. It's just me, my mileage, that's what I feel. And I would say this is a medium recoiling piston gun. A harder recoiling one would probably probably be the Robinson Arms XCR. 
And then the softest one I've shot to date is the Rock River PDS. That was a very soft shooting piston gun, somewhere in between maybe the Christensen Arm CA-15 running around there. Okay, so just a couple data points there. Wait, I didn't talk about that. And by the way, you guys, I haven't really introduced this. This is actually a Leopold MRT 2.5x8x36 scope riding in an LT-158 LaRue mount QD. And it's illuminated. That is a rocking scope all the way around. It has an illuminated TMR reticle in it. And it's call number, that is Leopold number 67925 if you're interested. With this scope on it, as you see it here without the mag, this gun's going to weigh 9 pounds, 5 ounces. Not super light, but honestly, once you outfit it, uh, I'm talking a DI gun, you're going to be basically at the same weight. My Rock River Entry Tactical outfitted, very similar, about the same weight, maybe even a little more. I think the weight on the LWRC is very reasonable. Naked, like 9.6, uh, not 9, but 7.6 pounds. Same weight as a 416 is my understanding. Uh, if you go with their very upgraded SPR version, I'll roll a picture in here perhaps, 16 inch barrel, and that one actually has a skirmish sights on it, 7.4 pounds. So that's fluting, saves about 20% of weight is what they say. Has an SPR mod forend, it's kind of like the Reaper forend, very similar. Slim and you can put the rails where you need it, BCM gunfighter charging handle, a bunch of other whiz bang cool stuff on it. Very expensive though. One disadvantage of piston guns, and honestly to include the LWRC M6 series, is swing speed due to having extra metal up towards the front end. A DI gun doesn't have those metal parts up there, and so it's going to be a little bit lighter in the forend. And for me, my mileage, I seem to be able to swing them a little bit quicker, get them into action. Could be that I'm just a wuss with my upper body strength. That's probably the reason, but it's just a minor consideration that if, if you are considering a DI gun against the LWRC, there is a little bit more mass, which is just physics. You can't get around it. Let's break open the gun. Wish me luck, and I'm going to show you the internals. And that will get to some of the other stuff I want to show you. First off, how does the lower receiver to upper receiver fit? Uh, I actually have an AccuWedge in there now, and the AccuWedge, it's really tight, uh, which is the way I like it. I think you, you, guys, you guys want your guns fit in the same way. Without it, there was a little bit of wiggle between the two, up, two pieces, and honestly, I would expect a gun of this price not to have any wiggle. It should be tight. Okay, that's just me. M4 feed ramps right there on the bottom. I guess I should take out the bolt carrier, which is still dirty. You can see them right there. No chrome plating, it's Nikkor. And the rest is pretty much standard AR-15. There's a charging handle, your cover, stuff you'd expect to see, and this is what I want to show you. This is the old style bolt carrier of LWRC M6 series rifles. It has a separate shoulder, an impact shoulder, and this is a sh short stroke piston design. So basically the bolt, um, not the bolt, but the piston just travels a very short distance smacks that intermediate rod which smacks this the shoulder on the bolt carrier and it actuates that's how that thing works and all the gas and gunk stays up front like you've heard a billion times I've had zero problems with this even though it's a two-piece bolt carrier group which by the way LWRC told me it was more expensive to make this version than the current version zero problems staked keys as you can see MPI um, inspected too so it's an MPI bolt Military quality is what we're talking here. M16 style of bolt protective firing pin right here. There's a rear flange on the back. You guys remember why those are there? We saw that in SR556. It's basically to prevent carrier tilt. Carrier tilt is when you get an off center impact here and it wants to kind of tilt that bolt carry as it comes back. And so what it'll do is rub your buffer tube a little bit. And I'm happy to report there's been no carrier tilt issues at all in all the rounds fired out of this gun. I don't see any metal shavings or anything in there that would indicate a problem. There's an AccuWedge right there. Okay, and then a standard charging handle. Uh, no BCM style or the upgraded ones. But again, do you really need that? You might want to look carefully at it. If you're a competitor, you're going to run this in 3-gun, which by the way, forgot to throw that POU in there too. Be a great 3-gun option for it. You. you might want to upgrade some parts there. 
Okay, give me a second, I'm gonna put it all back together, be right back. Gun back together, fingers greasy, pressing on. One thing I forgot to mention is the coating on that bolt carrier. It's called nickel boron. It's applied by a company called Fail Safe. It's very similar, if not identical, to NP3, if you've ever heard of that. High lubricity, great corrosion resistance. It cleans very well and gives the gun more smoothness. I'll vouch for all of those properties from my testing. Love it. And it's expensive to put on. So as you're looking at the parts of this gun, I'm showing them to you as best I can, you might get a feel of why it costs what it does. Okay, especially this version that had the anodizing, you're talking the nickel boron coating, the Nikkor coating, the MPI testing, the stuff that just costs money. Again, and this is a U.S. produced gun, 100%. Most of them that I'm going to roll on the tail, I'm talking ARs, probably are. ISO 9001 compliant, by the way, which means it meets the very high industrial standards internationally. It's hard to get ISO 9001, so good job with that. On we go to reliability and durability. It, early in the developmental process of the M6 series of rifles, and I will say early, the gun was introduced in 2004. It was put in the hands of some dudes that did a lot of shooting. I think that was very smart that LWRC did that. They collaborated with them. One of them was Pat Rogers of EAG Tactical. He had some M6A1s that ran in his schools. His students ran them with very little maintenance, very little lubrication, and he wrote a great article about how that played out in SWAT magazine. I remember reading that a couple years ago. They basically had 70,000 rounds between the three guns. And these were earlier versions of the LWRC series of rifles. They had an older um, design of piston return spring. And they experienced a couple failures of those piston return springs. And let's show the diagram what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll roll in a picture as well. Okay, right there. That's an important part. If that fails, the whole gun goes down. And then that was back when they were running my type of bolt carrier. I'm talking the two-piece variety. And they had some um, those gas keys come loose. Or it's not the gas key, but the screws that goes in it. They would chip and fail. So what LWRC was going through at that time was some quality control things as they were shifting over to new management. That's ancient history. Again, from 2009 on, you're getting a different gun. But I find it interesting that the guns, even back then, a predecessor to this gun ran, three of them ran, 70,000 rounds, and they actually did pretty pretty good. You know, some guys out there say, well, I should run 70,000 rounds one gun. Well, be realistic. Um, another school, uh, Tricon, I'm really not familiar with them, they ran 19,000 rounds through one gun. Okay, and they reported excellent reliability. Probably on par, maybe depending on who you're talking to, better than the H&K 416. It's definitely easier to maintain than the 416 because this is a U.S. produced gun. LWRC is a U.S. company. They stock the parts. You need a part. They have outstanding customer service. They get it to you. Done. And another thing is back to the philosophy of use as an RTR war ready carbine is that it, it basically comes with everything you need. I mean we're kind of jumping ahead to accessories but I mean you've got a decent pistol grip. What are you going to do with a barrel? Nothing. It's got iron sights on it. I wouldn't do anything to internals. Well, okay. I'd swap the trigger out. <laughs> you don't have to, though. If you like the six-pound trigger, rock on. And it's just personal preference if you ever put a rear stock on. Okay? That's kind of a little aside there. Anyways, reliability and durability, as we saw in the Nut and Fancy Project, was nothing less than 100%. I fired all kinds of ammunition through it. I'm talking brass and there at the latter part, 100 rounds of steel, 100% reliable, has zero carrier tilt. Uh, LWRC says it has about four times the service life and 100% more accurate than an M4. I don't know if I buy that last part because I think a, a good Colt M4 is pretty darn accurate. Um, but the four times the service life from what I'm seeing of the coatings, what I'm seeing about how the heat stays up here, you know, what I'm seeing as a result of very knowledgeable people like Pat Rogers who have ran them. Um, I'll probably sign off on that. Can run without lube, too. You don't have to. LWRC's own test did it without lube. They just started shooting the crap out of them. Remember that self-cleaning piston cup and gas plug scrapes itself. Um, and when we talk about reliability and durability, we got to kind of jump ahead to track record and who's running it. This is an LE military gun. 
There's tons of agencies running That's LWR the LWRC M6 series A2 of rifles, and I'm using the A2 version, but if you want to go with the A3, the A1 with the fixed eight. front sight, the SPR, scope. special edition ones like the Tricon, sold out by the way, they're pretty much the same. You know, basically any three letter agency is running their guns, and they keep buying them. Um, and we get back to track record, where they've been, their testing they've been through, and from a cost effectiveness standpoint, if I'm the armorer for an agency, I want something that's going to break down less that I don't have to fool around with. There you go. The reliability and durability are going to be just top notch. Accuracy. I told you guys the 1 in 7 twist is mostly a good thing. And it depends on the gun. Every gun is an individual. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. This is how the M6A2 shot ball ammo. Huh. Not too stellar. This is July of this year, 55 grain FMJ American Eagle. I really like it when, I don't care if it's a high-end gun, a mid-end gun, a low-end gun. I want it to shoot standard ball ammo well. To me, it's kind of like having a car that doesn't require premium gas. You know what I mean? 2.9 inch group at 100 yards. This is out in the desert, by the way. It was windy. It wasn't a range. So... I was still disappointed. Three inch group here. There's some Keltec stuff here. I already did that review. 3.5 inches? Come on. That one nailed it dead center. So that was good. And then I, I think I did take it to a range. I have it marked on here. Horrible. I'm more talking about the ammo too. That's 75 grain Amax Hunting Shack ammo. And I've just really not seen that perform out of too many guns. 2.75 inch, 5 inch group, uh, 5 shot group. There's a really good one. 3 quarter inch group. That's what I would expect that ammo to shoot off of. Good trigger presses here though. Very stable. This is not rush shooting. Careful shooting. So I expect better than this. Especially out of an expensive gun like this. 3 inch group. 2 inch. Okay. Yeah, more doable. But heck, I'm shooting where an AK would shoot and definitely a Mini 14 would shoot right there, right? Huh. Next month came by, I was like, I gotta go shoot that thing. I know it can be better. I took it out with American Eagle again. 100 yards, this is in August. Shooting off the lead sled DFT. I'll roll in footage as I'm talking. Two and a half inch group. 2.8 inch group PMC. Shot a 1.3 there. Better. Federal American Eagle. That's again the same one as you. That's about the only loads I, I had a lot of that I could really shoot. Uh, I'm talking for accuracy. PMC, there we go. I mean, I was just like, wow, dude, not awesome. I gotta really dial into some good ammo and see if this, if this gun is just inherently just has an issue or if it's just the ammo, what the ammo it likes. And then we get to the one in seven twist problem. Because here we go with Federal Gold Medal Match 69 grain. Heavier bullet, one in seven twist. It likes it, three quarter MOA, half MOA at times. There's a three quarter inch group, 100 yards. One MOA, half MOA, wicked, look at that group. By the way, that is one of my favorite rounds ever in the history of ever that I've shot so far. It shoots good out of basically every gun I've shot it out of. One and a half MOA, that's more like it. And it got even better. Okay, so I shot this group right here. Wicked, same rounds. Uh, I think that is, Sierra Match King Federal Premium is what those were actually. Those aren't gold medal match. Wow, look at that. That's like one quarter MOA. Heavier bullet though. See what I'm saying here? One seven twist. Uh-huh, liked it, liked it. And then we go with 55 grain Nosler. It really liked that stuff too. So that kind of flies in the face of that formulation. So what I have to say, to be honest, to be real, High integrity gear reviews, what you get here, is it's not overly accurate with ball ammo. Sorry, it's just not. It's going to shoot about 2 to 3 MOA in my experience, and I shot the hell out of it. I did. That's only some of the targets. Trying, trying, trying to do well with it. And it wasn't my trigger presses. It wasn't, you guys know I shoot all the time. I felt very comfortable with all of that. That's just what you're going to get. Um, with premium ammo, maybe even heavier ammo, it's going to sing. You're talking... Easily one MOA, probably half MOA. That's the accuracy as I see it. How does it compare to other guns? Um, it was very similar to the Christensen Arm CA-15. It shot about the same. Until I got really premium ammo in it, it really didn't like it. It might be an outgrowth of the piston system. 
the anomaly to that whole thing and that theory is that Rock River Arms PDS, it shot one MOA with regular ball ammo. I got a crank. Field strip and maintenance. Basically, I already did it. I, you just pop the two receivers apart, pull it out, done. I'm not going to pull the front rail off of it because here's your pictures of how to do that. I haven't cleaned it yet, so it's filthy under there. I'm not going to get the table all jacked up. You're going to undo those two screws. You pull that front rail just an eighth of an inch, inch forward, and then it disengages. You pull it up, and then you have access to all your piston and rod components. You can pull them out and clean them. Recommended to do, I think, like every three to 5,000 rounds is what LWRC says. Pull those out, and this is, of course, after you've taken the bolt carrier group out. Simple Simon. Um, I will say what I've always said, though. That crap goes somewhere and it goes right here. And so you can either clean your bolt carrier group or you're going to clean this. They're both difficult to clean your, and it's just, it is what it is. It's crappy. And guys act like the piston guns are so clean. They're really not. All the dirt and stuff's up here that's just not back here. I'm cleaning them the same period of time, to be honest with you. I forgot to mention firepower. Firepower is awesome. It's AR-15, M4, M16. All the magazines I used in this, by the way, rock. There's a Troy Industries Battle Mag. There's the latest generation of Magpul P Mag. Those all worked great. If you want to go hog wild and upgrade to something serious, Beta C, bro, go for it. Works. Firepower is outstanding as it should be for all free men. You know what I'm saying? Excellent. Enough said on firepower accessories. Well, honestly, again, what do you need to accessorize on LWRC except for a second kind of cool personal preference, okay? And you know I, I have those two. I admit it. Um, not much. You could buy your LWRC and not do a darn thing to it, and you'd be very happy. Very happy, I think. Um, if you had to do something to it, uh, you probably might want to buy some of those piston return springs. The ones that are up here, that actually does exactly what its name implies is it returns it to fire again. You can shoot those for about 5,000 rounds is what the life expectancy is. They do have an upgraded version they put in the LE guns um, that are supposed to last the life of the rifle. Now that I've said that on this video, I think everyone's going to be asking for that, and they'll probably put it in the civilian guns as well. But the spring that's in this gun is a 5,000-round spring. They're only $5, though. So stock up. You can swap them out so easily by pulling that top rail off. It's really no big deal. Um, I put in the AccuWedge, I put in the Timney Trigger, a little bit of stock changing. How about the two-piece bolt? Would you recommend upgrading that nothing fancy? I would say no. With a staked version like this, I've had no problems. I wouldn't do it until it failed. I'm not going to go out and spend whatever it costs, uh, you know, $350 for a one-piece bolt group, uh, bolt carrier from LWRC. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, Mid-length rail, by the way, here. So it's not short carving length on the value. I will say value, considering all the stuff you get, that it is RTR, is actually in the ballpark. You get BUIS with it. You get a decent stock. Some guys really love the Veltor stock. They love it, love it, love it. The great, great barrel. I would say it's in the ballpark. I wouldn't say it's smoking great value. I mean, the gun is going to ballpark this version without the Cerakoting on it for around $2,200. Not super cheap, but then again, how much was that Christensen Arm CA-15? And it did not have anywhere near the track record the LWRC does. The track record is, well, phenomenal. Okay, and that limited, they had a limited edition one too. What was it called? It was uh, Arizona State Police ordered it. They had 200 left over. They made them available. They were a fully ambidextrous model of the M6A2. They called it the operator. Those are gone. Uh, L LWRC tells me, AJ over there says he's they're going to come out with a an ambidextrous, fully ambidextrous rifle in the future. They'll have some slight changes, so this model is just kind of a snapshot in time, more representative of the 2009-2010 time frame like you saw with the innards and stuff. Uh, and there are some special operations users using them, and they're very happy with them. Details can be divulged. I'll just leave it at that. Overall, my take on the LWRC M6A2, especially this one, is I love it. Notwithstanding the three inch groups with ball ammo, I don't so much love that. And it's going to take a little bit of a hit in likability for me personally because of that. I think it should shoot it better than it does. It needs high quality ammo, perhaps heavier ammo, to shoot well. But it was 100% reliable. It never jammed, not once, and it failed to go into battery. It was just chugging and chugging. It, it shot wolf ammo? 
Are you kidding me? Wolf ammo? I haven't seen a piston gun yet do that. The looks are just killer. It is such a good looking gun, especially this very collectible green anodized version. But if you go with the Cerakote, it's just a cool looking gun. And it's a gun that's respected in fighting circles. And I'm talking about guys who are out there getting it done, putting their life on the line. Sheep dogs, the military guys, the LE guys. This is their gun of choice often, the LWRC. It's an excellent gun. Stay tuned to LWRC. They got more of them coming out. That is a nothing fancy review. Thanks for subscribing, watching. You guys are my friends. See ya. LWRC talks a pretty big game with its M6 series of rifles. But everything I've seen from shooting this one in the Nut and Fancy project, it delivers. Accurate, 100% reliability, fun to shoot, lightweight, piston driven. Love the M6 series from LWRC. It's a big win. Uh, the scores out of sledge should represent it. You know, any misses were shooter error as usual. Love it. PO7. Okay, mixed bag with reliability. Again, tabletop on both forthcoming. This is Nut Fancy Cameraman, Last Suspect, signing off from the very hot and windy desert. See you later.